I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect Legendary Edition, Garrus Vicarian has joined the crew and Erdnot Rex shortly afterwards. Now, Fist, a former agent of an information dealer known as the Shadow Broker, has arranged a meeting with a Quarian who has evidence against Saren. And guess who Fist is now working for? And hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to Mass Effect Legendary Edition right here on Missile Dine Online, where we are playing on Insanity Difficulty, the best way to play the game, and premiering new episodes every single day at 2 p.m. Eastern right here. Make sure you hit that subscribe thing in the bell notification so that you know when we are premiering new episodes. Huge shout out to those of you watching in these premieres. I love hanging out with you guys in the live chat every single day. Uh, it's, it's the highlight of my day. I, I appreciate you. So in this episode of Mass Effect Legendary Edition, we are going to go confront Fist, the Shadow Broker agent who has turned against the Shadow Broker and is now working for Saren, who's going after a Quarian who supposedly has evidence that proves Saren is connected with the Geth. And that, my friends, is what we're here to do on the Citadel after all. So we are going to jump into a bunch of action right away. Why don't we jump right into it? So we're going to approach Korra's Dead. I highly recommend saving, maybe spending some points real quick before you head in. But you'll see on our little mini-map like there, down. there's a lot of red dots. Fist knows we're coming. Here we go. Our first big battle. I'm going to go ahead and use barrier right out of the gate. This guy was like, hey, what's up? We are going to go ahead and... Hmm. Let's use warp on him. Hopefully that hits. We'll go ahead and throw this bartender. Perfect. That killed him right away. Oh, guys, you guys are in my way. Let's see if we can get a big throw on this guy here. Fortunately, that hit the table. What about sabotage? You want to use the sabotage there? Perfect. Beautiful. Love to see it. Finish this guy off. Goodbye, thug friend. And we have another guy sitting over here. We can take down. He's already in the red. No shields. Get out of my town, buddy. Right there, though, we have our first ever Krogan. And uh, Krogans in this game are very, very hard to take down. We'll go ahead and right out of the gate, see if we can get a big overload on him. And we'll see if Ashley can pop her overkill. And there we go. He's got barrier on him. We are going to see if this overload on this guy can hit both of them. Perfect. We want to see if we can take down this Krogan. Barrier being used there. We have to pop back behind cover. Our shields are down. Now the Krogan is going to actually regenerate its health while it's on the ground. So you want to make sure that you focus everything you can into taking it down. There we go. We got another one down. Only a few left. There's a guy up here. Let's go ahead and see if we can take him down real quick. Sophie thinks we can. Right here, we have a fire containment thing. We can pop that. Throw out some toxic on this guy here. Finish him off. Moving on. You'll see that there's a quest marker here for Septimus. And, you know, Septimus isn't even around. But we're not done yet. Let's go ahead and throw this guy. Boom, get out of my face. Get out of here, guy. Let's go ahead and open this door. We're going to actually have two warehouse workers. Stop right there. Don't come any closer. Warehouse workers. All the real guards must be dead. Hmm. Stay back or we'll shoot. Hey, I have an idea for you warehouse workers. Why don't you save this yourselves? This be a good time to find somewhere else to work. Yeah, yeah, right. That's a good idea. Yeah, I never liked Fist anyway. I can't believe that worked. Yeah, that was easy. Shooting people isn't always the answer. Well, okay, nine times out of ten it probably is. You'll get two Paragon points for charming their butts off and making them leave. And we have a weapon locker over here that we can decrypt real quick. I was hoping we'd hit level four before we fought Fist, but it's looking like that's not going to be the case. We have a, ooh, a new pistol that looks pretty darn good. <laughs> And it's not, so we'll just we'll just ignore that. All right, let's get ready. Let's get into a battle. We'll go ahead. Oh, no, no, I want you guys over there. As soon as they run over there, we're going to have to deal with... Go ahead, Ashley. And right here is Fist. He's going to be pretty mad at us. Now, Fist is going to be here hitting us pretty hard. We're going to go ahead and throw a warp on him real quick. Oh, no, I need the warp to be over it. Is it, why is it not hello? Nope, wouldn't work. Let's go ahead and shield boost ourselves here. We're actually going to use barrier. 
take out these turrets right away. Remember, if you're an engineer, you can actually use AI hacking here, which is going to be super useful. Go ahead and... Come on, Kaden, I need your help. Let's go ahead and cast her overkill. And... Kaden! Kaden's down. Kaden's down. Kaden was taken down. You can actually see in the bottom there. I think that's the first time a squad mate of ours is down. Wait, Poor guy me, died. That's so unfortunate. Now, remember, Rex has a contract from the Shadow Broker to kill this guy. And uh, Rex isn't the type to not do that. So, if you don't want to kill Fist right away, maybe don't bring Rex to this firefight. I need information, dude. Where's the Quarian? She's not here. I don't know where she is. That's the truth. He's lying. <laughs> you got three seconds to come clean. Then I start shooting. The Quarian isn't here. Said you'd only deal with the Shadow Broker himself. I thought the Shadow Broker only worked through agents. So the Quarian's smart. Nobody meets the Shadow Broker. Ever. Even I don't know his true identity. But she didn't know that. I told her I'd set a meeting up. But when she shows up, it'll be Saren's men waiting for her. <sighs> we have to save her. Give me the location. Now. Here on the wards, the back alley by the markets. She's supposed to meet them right now. You can make it if you hurry. Am I supposed to just forget your part in all this? Hey, I came clean. I told you about the meeting. Besides, I've got my own problems now. The Shadow Broker wants me dead. I have to disappear. Forget about me. I'm a ghost. Fine. Disappear. You're not my concern. Don't worry, you'll never see me again. Get out of here, guy. And we get a bunch of XP. Get to the Quarian and warn her before it's too late. Quarian lost in under four minutes. But there are more enemies waiting for us as soon as we go outside here. So we're going to want to make sure that we take them down quickly because we do not have much time. Waiting to ambush us. That's two thugs down. Let's go. I was shooting. I was. Don't, don't look at me, chat. Go ahead and destroy this guy. Get out of here, and can we toss this one? Why? Nope. Damn table got in the way. That's all right. I'll shoot you in the calf. That'll ruin your life, apparently. What about this guy? Let's go ahead and see if we can... Bam! Oh, no. That's not good. See, sometimes melee doesn't work as you would hope, and uh, that can really ruin your day. All right. We got to find the Quarian. We only have three minutes until the Quarian is lost. Yeah, that's right. The Quarian can just be completely gone but luckily for us i think we can find the quarian right here quarian quarian friends there she is did you bring it where's the shadow broker where's fist they'll be here where's the evidence no way the deal's off Yeah, Tally! Finally, some action. And our first time fighting a Solarian. Goodbye, Solarian, as we level up. You'll love to see it. Let's go ahead and take him down. We're also going to go ahead and cast Barrier real quick before that ends up being a problem. And let's toss this guy out of here. Get out of my face. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. We're overheated. We'll go ahead and sabotage him. And warp him. And overload again. There we go. Let's take him down. Take him down. You got to watch out for his shotguns. Those are going to hurt if he approaches us. But luckily, we have another throw that we can use from Kaden here. Get out of here, buddy, and finish him off. Assassin dead, 128 XP. Hey, Keeper. Just set me up. I knew I couldn't trust him. You okay? Were you hurt in the fight? I know how to look after myself. Not that I don't appreciate the help. Who are you? My name's Shepard. I'm looking for evidence to prove Saren's a traitor. Then I have a chance to repay you for saving my life. But not here. We need to go somewhere safe. The ambassador's office. It's safe there. They'll want to see this anyway. There, my friends, is one of the best characters. You're not oh, making just, my life easy, you know? Shepard. Firefights in the wards and all-out assault on Korra's Den. Do you know how many... Who's this? The Quarian? What are you up to, Shepard? Uh, proving Saren was a traitor. Making your day, Ambassador. 
She has information linking Saren to the Geth. Really? Maybe you better start at the beginning, Miss... My name is Tali. Tali Zora Naraya. We don't see many Quarians here. Why did you leave the flotilla? I was on my pilgrimage. My rite of passage into adulthood. What's that? I've never heard of this before. It is a tradition among my people. When we reach maturity, we leave the ships of our parents and our people behind. Alone, we search the stars, only returning to the flotilla once we have discovered something of value. In this way, we prove ourselves worthy of adulthood. What kinds of things do you look for? It could be resources like food or fuel, or some type of useful technology, or even knowledge that will make life easier on the flotilla. Through our pilgrimage, we prove that we will contribute to the community, rather than being a burden on our limited resources. Interesting. Tell us what you found. During my travels, I began hearing reports of Geth. Since they drove my people into exile, the Geth have never ventured beyond the Vale. I was curious. I tracked a patrol of Geth to an uncharted world. I waited for one to become separated from its unit. Then I disabled it and removed its memory core. I thought the Geth fried their memory cores when they died. Some kind of defense mechanism. How did you manage to preserve the memory core? My she's people awesome. created the Geth. If you're quick, careful, and lucky, small caches of data can sometimes be saved. Most of the core was wiped clean, but I salvaged something from its audio banks. Here we go. Eden Prime was a major victory. The beacon has brought us one step closer to finding the conduit. That's Saren's voice. This proves he was involved in the attack. Okay, but what's the conduit? He said Eden Prime brought him one step closer to finding the conduit. Any idea what that means? The conduit must have something to do with the beacon. Maybe it's some kind of Prothean technology. Like a weapon. Wait, there's more. Saren wasn't working alone. Eden Prime was a major victory. The beacon has brought us one step closer to finding the conduit. And one step closer to the return of the Reapers. The I don't recognize that other voice, the one talking about Reapers. I feel like I've heard that name before. According to the Memory Core, the Reapers were a hyper-advanced machine race that existed 50,000 years ago. The Reapers hunted the Protheans to total extinction, and then they vanished. At least, that's what the Geth believe. Sounds a little far-fetched. No, oh, but it's true. The vision on Eden Prime. I understand it now. I saw the Protheans being wiped out by the Reapers. The Geth revere the Reapers as gods, the pinnacle of non-organic life. And they believe Saren knows how to bring the Reapers back. The Council is just going to love this. You know what? They're not going to believe us, but they, the they need to know. The Reapers are a threat to every species in Citadel space. We have to tell them. No matter what they think about the rest of this, those audio files prove Saren's a traitor. The Captain's right. We need to present this to the Council right away. What about her, the Quarian? Oh, we're taking her. My name is Tali. Hi, Tali. I love you. You saw me in you. the alley, Commander. You know what I can do. Let me come with you. Okay, but what about your pilgrimage? I thought you were on your pilgrimage. The pilgrimage proves we are willing to give of ourselves for the greater good. What does it say about me if I turn my back on this? Saren is a danger to the entire galaxy. My pilgrimage can wait. Yeah, you know what? I'll take all the help I can get. Absolutely. Thanks. You won't regret this. Tally, welcome and I will go ahead to, get to the squad. Take a few minutes to collect yourself, then meet us in the tower. That is so exciting. She is a pure engineer. Just like Ashley is a pure soldier, she is a pure engineer, meaning we only have one slot left on our squad here. She is amazing. Absolutely love Tally Zora Naraya. She is incredible. She is super useful throughout the series. Uh, definitely a squad mate that I recommend getting to know and hanging out with. And, uh, and you know, really, she's in all three games. So just, you can't beat that. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, we're going to go ahead and we're going to keep choosing Caden 
and Ashley until we get our first uh, ally trophies, which should be very, very soon. Let's go ahead and accept that. Which, by the way, I think I mentioned in the last episode, but those have been nerfed tremendously. You can actually get those now in five missions. Side quest count, all of that counts. So, yes, we are optimizing our side quest stuff. We don't need to at all anymore, um, but it is something that I'm going to do just, just for old time's sake. Samesh Bhatia. Could you spare a moment of your time? Unfortunately, I can't, but... Um, I can come back after something else and then maybe give you a moment of my time. Anyways, we want to use the Citadel Rapid Transit so that we can go present our information to... Oh, where am I going? Citadel Tower. There we go. We can go present our information to the council. This proves what we've been saying. Saren is an evil, evil boy. We've arrived at the Citadel Tower. Remember, we're skipping side quests for now. Hello, Hello. Anderson. Udin is presenting the Quarian's evidence to the Council. Eden Prime was a major victory. The beacon has brought us one step closer to finding the Conduit. And one step closer to the return of the Reapers. You wanted proof? There it is. This evidence is irrefutable, Ambassador. Saren will be stripped of his Spectre status, and all efforts will be made to bring him in to answer for his crimes. I recognize the other voice, the one speaking with Saren. Matriarch Benezia. Who? Who is she? Matriarchs are powerful Asari who have entered the final stage of their lives. Revered for their wisdom and experience, they serve as guides and mentors to my people. Matriarch Benezia is a powerful biotic, and she had many followers. She will make a formidable ally for Saren. I'm more interested in the Reapers. What do you know about them? Only what was extracted from the Geth's memory core. The Reapers were an ancient race of machines that wiped out the Protheans. Then they vanished. The Geth believe the Reapers are gods, and Saren is the prophet for their return. We think the Conduit is the key to bringing them back. Saren's searching for it. That's why he attacked Eden Prime. Do we even know what this Conduit is? Saren thinks it can bring back the Reapers. That's bad enough. Listen to what you're saying. Saren wants to bring back the machines that wiped out all life in the galaxy? Impossible. It has to be. Where Why? did the Reapers go? Why did they vanish? How come we found no trace of their existence? If they were real, we'd have found something. You know, they are real. I tried to warn you about Saren and you refused to face the truth. Don't make the same mistake again. This is different. You proved Saren betrayed the Council. We all agree he's using the Geth to search for the Conduit, but we don't really know why. The Reapers are obviously just a myth, Commander. A convenient lie to cover Saren's true purpose. A legend he is using to bend the Geth to his will. 50,000 years ago, the Reapers wiped out all galactic civilization. If Saren finds the Conduit, it will happen again. Saren well. is a rogue agent on the run for his life. He no longer has the rights or resources of a Spectre. The Council has stripped him of his position. That is not good enough. You know he's hiding somewhere in the Traverse. Send your fleet in! A fleet cannot track down one man. But it's not one man. He's a got... A citadel oh, fleet could man. secure the entire region. Keep the Geth from attacking any more of our colonies. Or it could trigger a war with the Terminus systems. We won't be dragged into a galactic confrontation over a few dozen human colonies. You know what? I have an idea. Send me. I can take Saren down. The commander's right. There is a way to stop Saren that doesn't require fleets or armies. No. It's too soon. Humanity is not ready for the responsibilities that come with joining the Spectres. You don't have to send a fleet into the Traverse, and the Ambassador gets his human Spectre. Everybody's happy. Smart. She's smart! Yeah, baby. Commander Shepard, step forward. Sentinel Ally Trophy, one of our trophies already earned, and we should get the Soldier one in just one more mission. That means we can get those guys out of our squad for good. Sorry, no offense, Ashley and Caden. It Love is the guys. decision of the Council that you be granted all the powers and privileges of the Special Tactics and Reconnaissance Branch of the Citadel. Spectres are not trained, but chosen. 
Individuals forged in the fire of service and battle. Those whose actions elevate them above the rank and file. Spectres are an ideal, a symbol, the embodiment of courage, determination, and self-reliance. They are the right hand of the Council, instruments of our will. Spectres bear a great burden. They are protectors of galactic peace, both our first and last line of defense. The safety of the galaxy is theirs to uphold. You are the first human Spectre, Commander. This is a great accomplishment for you and your entire species. I'm honored, Counselor. We're sending you into the Traverse after Saren. He's a fugitive from justice, so you are authorized to use any means necessary to apprehend or eliminate him. Commander Corey Shepard, the first human Spectre. Any idea where to find him? We will forward any relevant files to Ambassador Udina. This meeting of the Council is adjourned. This was a good meeting. This was a good meeting of the Council. I, you know, I gotta admit, this went well. Congratulations, Commander. We've got a lot of work to do, Shepard. You're going to need a ship, a crew, supplies. I already have a ship, I already have a You'll crew, I already have supplies. To special equipment and training now. You should go down to the CSEC Academy and speak to the Spectre Requisitions Officer. Anderson, come with me. I'll need your help to set Spectre all this up. Spectre inductee trophy pop. I don't know, man. We already have a ship. You from the ambassador. Yeah, whatever. He sucks, dude. What do you expect from a politician? Come on. Right behind you, Commander. Spectre bonus. Spectre training talent is now unlocked. What does that mean, I wonder? So if we go ahead and look at our squad, we now have Spectre training. Elite agents of the Council. The Spectres have access to special training unavailable elsewhere in the galaxy. Increases health, accuracy, and effectiveness of all attacks and powers, and grants unity, which restores dead squad members with 30% health and 50% shield. So we can actually go ahead and, uh, well, we're not going to do that yet because we we want to make sure that we have some intimidate points. You know what I'm saying? Just to, uh, just to make sure, just to make sure we have that. All right, let's go ahead and put some points into our unity here. Just enough so that we can get that. And we are also going to pop some points into our basic armor. And uh, let's do a little bit more into our th barrier. Nah, dude. Pistols. We also have some points that we can put on our dear friends here. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can put some points into decryption and electronics and Sentinel just to reduce the cooldown. And we'll go ahead and give Ashley some combat armor, which will unlock first aid. And we can unlock that real quick as well. And there we go. Perfect. Let's get out of here. Hey, Caden, you know what? Actually, my friend. Whoops. Let me go ahead and pop a Medi. Medi gel deployed. Oh, yeah, that feels good. We're going to switch Caden out as soon as we can now that we have his trophy. And we should be getting Ashley's very soon as well. Remember, we're still skipping squat, 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 uh for now. So keep that in mind. So let's go to CSEC. And we just found out that we can actually go uh, talk to the Spectre Requisition Officer, who we've actually already met. If you remember, I said, this guy's going to be useful. And that's why, because we are a Spectre. What up? We're so we're so flipping cool, dude. We're so cool. Commander Corey Shepard. Hmm. You got to love it. Anyways, this is where they are down here. Hello, Commander. Hello. I need Show supplies. me what you got. Sounds good. Just let me set you up. Oh, this must be a mistake. Oh, it is not. System's telling me to offer you our select stock. Spectre? Yep. Well, I heard about that, but I didn't realize it was you. Sorry, Commander. Hey, no problem. Just show me what you've got. I'll open the rare stocks for you, Commander. Enjoy. Rare stocks. Oh, man. Look at it. I can buy all of this stuff in 1,800 years with on this maybe specter salary is a little bit better this is some of the best stuff that you can get in the game of course is not this stuff but the uh the specter gear that is up here the h m w p the h the h the h stuff uh is all very very good stuff so keep that in mind uh as we go on now, i would also recommend now that we've talked to him and opened up the stock since we can't afford anything there and we can't really sell anything to get a lot of money uh, I think that's pretty much all that we can do now. Make sure that you purchase any licenses or anything that you can get while you're here. Metagel upgrades, grenade capacity. Now remember, we don't actually have enough money to buy Metagel upgrade two, 
uh, the capacity upgrade, but that's not a big deal. Anyways, for the first time ever, we are ready to go and use this to go to the docking bay where the counselor and the captain are waiting for us. In other news, Exogenicorp is still denying reports that one of their survey teams has gone missing in the Hades Gamma Cluster. And now we know where to when look. asked why communication with the survey team was suddenly cut off last week, company officials refused to comment. And they just gave us a little side quest. So now we know that we need to go check out the hated gamma, gamma place. Anyways, I wonder why they're outside the Normandy. I've got big news for you, Shepard. Captain Anderson is stepping down as commanding officer of the Normandy. The ship is yours now. Hell yeah, it is. She's quick and quiet, and you know the crew. Perfect ship for a Spectre. Treat her well, Commander. I will. I'll take good care of her, sir. I know you will, Commander. Why are you doing this, though? I want though? the truth. Why are you stepping down, sir? You needed your own ship. A Spectre can't answer to anyone but the Council. And it's time for me to step down. Yeah, there's definitely something Come else going on. Come me, Captain. You owe me that much. I was in your shoes 20 years ago, Shepard. They were considering me for the Spectres. I knew it! Why didn't you ever mention this? What was I supposed to say? I could have been a Spectre, but I blew it? I failed, Commander. It's not something I'm proud of. Ask me later and I'll tell you the whole story. For now, all you need to know is, I was sent on a mission with Saren, and he made sure the Council rejected me. I had my shot. It came and went. Now you have a chance to make up for my mistakes. You can count on me, man. I won't let you down, sir. Saren's gone. Don't even try to find him. But we know what he's after. The conduit. He's got his Geth scouring the Traverse looking for clues. We had reports of Geth in the Pharaoh system shortly before our colony there dropped out of contact. And there have been sightings around Noveria. Two find out colonies that we already know about. On Pharaohs and Noveria. Maybe you can figure out where the conduit is before he does. Mm, what about the Reapers? The Reapers are the real threat. I'm with the Council on this one, Shepard. I'm not sure they even exist. I didn't ask you. But if they do exist, the conduit's the key to bringing them back. Stop Saren from getting the conduit, and we stop the Reapers from returning. Is that Anything it? Anything else? We have one more lead. Matriarch Benezia, the other voice in that recording. She has a daughter, a scientist, who specializes in the Protheans. We don't know if she's involved, but it might be a good idea to try and find her. See what she knows. Her name's Liara, Dr. Liara Tassoni. We have reports she was exploring an archaeological dig on one of the uncharted worlds in the Artemis Tau Cluster. You know, I think it's a good idea before we even start looking for anything that we get a Prothean expert to maybe help us out. So let's start there. Sounds like we should head for the Artemis Tau Cluster. It's your decision, Commander. You're a Spectre now. You don't answer to us. Your actions still reflect on humanity as a whole. You make a mess, and I get stuck cleaning it up. I'll try not to make things any harder on you, Ambassador. Yeah, Glad whatever. Hear it, Commander. Remember, you were a human long before you were a Spectre. None of that matters now. I have a galaxy. meeting to get to. Captain Anderson can answer any questions you might have. For the innocence of the galaxy. Anyways. Yes, Commander? I'm curious about, uh, tell me about this Artemis Tau Cluster. What do you know about the Artemis Tau Cluster? Not much. I've never been there myself. A handful of systems with a few small, uncharted worlds, but no real colonies. Might not be easy finding Dr. Tassoni out there. My advice is to look for the world with the Prothean ruins. <laughs> That's a really good idea. Are you okay? How are you holding up? Honestly, this isn't how I pictured my career coming to an end. Pushing papers really isn't my thing. But you're the one who can stop, Saren. I believe in you, Shepard. If that means I have to step aside, so be it. I love you. I mean, what? Tell me what happened with you and Saren 20 years ago. It's close to 20 years ago now. Ambassador Goyle was our representative here on the Citadel. Like Udina, she wanted to get a human into the Spectres. She chose me. The Council sent Saren to keep an eye on me and evaluate my performance, just like they sent Nihilus to keep tabs on you. Why weren't you honest with me? It's not something I'm proud of. I had a chance to become the first human Spectre, and I failed. Saren made sure of that. What happened? I think I deserve the whole story. You damn right we I do. Get intel on a rogue science. Archivist trophy already. Interests. He was trying to set up a facility to develop illegal AI technology out in the Verge. Alliance Intel had done all the work, but the Council wanted a Spectre involved. 
we compromised. I was assigned to help Saren in his investigation. We tracked the scientist to a refining facility on Kamala. He was hidden away somewhere inside, protected by an army of Batarian mercenaries. The plan was simple. Sneak into the plant, capture the scientist, sneak back out. Quick, quiet, and a minimum of bloodshed. I'm guessing things didn't go as planned? Saren and I split up to cover more ground. Then about halfway through the mission, there was a massive explosion in the refinery core. Officially, it was ruled an accident, but I think Saren detonated it on purpose to draw off the enemy guards. Hmm. Was anyone hurt? How many casualties? The explosion tore the refinery to shreds. The whole place was on fire. Black chemical clouds poured out into the atmosphere. Nobody inside survived. That was there all was a Saren. camp for the workers and their families nearby. Between the fires and the toxic fumes, the final death count was over 500. Mostly civilians. Saren didn't care. The target was eliminated. Mission accomplished. And I ended up taking the blame. That ended all talk of me joining the Spectres. Saren caused the explosion. How'd he pin it on you? In his report, Saren accused me of blowing his cover. He said it was my fault the guards were ready for us. He claimed that's why it turned into a massacre. Saren's report was all the proof the Council needed to kill my chances of becoming a Spectre. <sighs> don't blame that yourself, sucks, Captain. man. I don't. I blame Saren. I think he wanted things to go bad. He was looking for an excuse to blow that refinery. Maybe he just likes the violence. Maybe he was just trying to make me look bad to keep humans out of the Spectres. If so, he pulled it off. Why'd you let him get away with it? Who do you think the Council was going to listen to? Me? Or their best agent? Yeah, I had a bad yeah. feeling about him right from the start. I should have been more careful. Maybe I could have stopped things before they got out of hand. Nah, uh, just forget about the past. The only thing I care about is stopping Saren. You're right, Commander. It's no good living in the past. It's true. Hey, can you tell me a little bit about Pharos, Any extra my friend? intel you can give me on our colony at Pharos? The entire planet used to be one giant Prothean city. Mostly ruins now. But some of the infrastructure is still intact. The colony tried to build on what the Protheans left behind. We lost all contact with them when the Geth attacked. Oh man, that is not good. What about Novaria? What can you tell me about Novaria? Novaria's trouble. Always has been. The whole planet's basically a center for corporations to conduct illegal research. Oh, it's Watch like Earth. your back, Russia. Spectres are about the only form of citadel authority Novaria respects. But they aren't popular. Oh, shucks. Anyways, that's I all. Should go. I'll be here if you need From me. Captain Anderson, we did get that Archivist Trophy and 34 experience for talking to him. Captain Anderson, good luck, my friend. All right, let's head to our ship, the Normandy. It is now ours, which is good, because, man, did I miss... Did I miss Stand Dr. Chakwa's Joker? Decontamination in progress. I guess Navigator Presley? I mean, I... Heard what happened to Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. Just watch your back, Commander. If things go bad on this mission, you're next on their chopping block. This feels Captain wrong. Anderson should be the one in charge. It's like I'm stealing the ship from him. Yeah, the captain got screwed. But it's not like you could have stopped it. Nobody's blaming you. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander. 100%. Intercom's Good. open. You got anything you want to say to the crew? Now's the time. Yeah, you know what? Look, I need to be honest. This is Commander Shepard speaking. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. I won't lie to you, crew. This mission isn't going to be easy. This began with an attack on a human settlement in the Traverse. But we know Saren won't stop there. His Geth armies aren't going to stay on the far fringes of Citadel space. For too long, our species has stood apart from the others. Now it's time for us to step up and do our part for the rest of the galaxy. Time to show them what humans are made of. Our enemy knows we're coming. When we go into the Traverse, Saren's followers will be waiting for us. But we'll be ready for them, too. Yes, we will be. Humanity needs to do this. Not just for our own sake, but for the sake of every other species in Citadel space. Saren must be stopped, and I promise you all, we will stop him. Hell yeah! Well said, Commander. Captain will be proud. I won't the let Captain him down, gave man. up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. Yes, ma'am. Hell yeah. What a good speech. I'm a good speech. Commander, something you need? Yeah, give me How's a the status Normandy report. Performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet. 
if you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. Balance isn't what you'd expect. Takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back, and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. I like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? <laughs> yeah. I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. I didn't do a background you check. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I am the best damn helmsman in the Alliance fleet. Confidence Top is what it's about. Top of my class in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my disease. Uh... I didn't mean to insult. I didn't know you had a disease. I'm sorry, Joker. I didn't even know you were sick. You mean... You mean you didn't know? Oh, crap. No, it's fine. Okay, I've got Vrolix syndrome. Brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow. Too much force and they'll shatter. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! It's very dramatic. But I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. <laughs> How'd you get Why your Why does everyone call you Joker? It's a lot shorter than saying Alliance Flight Lieutenant Jeff Moreau. Plus, I love to make little children laugh. Yeah, right. I was just thinking how much you remind me of Santa Claus. Look, I didn't pick the name. One of the instructors in flight school used to bug me about never smiling. She started calling me Joker, and it stuck. Are you unhappy? Why didn't you ever smile? Hey, I worked my ass off in flight school, Commander. The world's not gonna hand you anything if you go around grinning like an idiot. By the end of the I year, love him. I was the best pilot in the academy. Even better than the instructors, and everybody knew it. They'd all got their asses kicked by the sickly kid with the creaky little legs. One guess who was smiling at graduation. <laughs> I, I love him so much. Hey, tell me about your I disease. I need to know more about this Rolex syndrome if I'm putting my ship in your hands. You really well, don't. Of course That's, you do. Yeah, you don't. It's an extremely rare condition. Nobody knows exactly what causes it. Genetic, maybe. It's treatable, but there's no cure. To classify my case as moderate to severe. I was born with over a dozen fractures, hip, thighs, ankles, my bones were already breaking in the womb. A hundred years ago, I wouldn't have survived past my first year. Lucky for me, modern medical science has turned me into a productive member of society. How do you do your You're job? You're not gonna break a bone trying to fly the ship, are you? That is uh, so rude. I don't rude. fly with my feet, Commander, so I'm fine <laughs> as long as I'm in this chair. I gotta be real careful when I get up to take a piss, though. I can do my job as well as anyone on the ship. Better, actually. So don't worry about it. I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. Let's talk about something else. Whatever you want, Commander. All right. I have to go. All right, see ya. See ya, I love you. I'm sorry that I was kind of aggressive with my, it's just that, you know, I've never, anyways, ooh, viewport, let's look outside. Get a codex entry and more experience. You gotta love it. You gotta love it, it's the best. That means that there's new codex entries we can get now that we, have full access, my friends, to the Normandy. This is our ship now. This communication room, mine. Oh, but that reminds me. Remember when I said that there would be more later on where the captain was back in like, I don't know, the first episode or second episode of the series? Well, let's go check that out. Obviously, I also recommend talking to all of your allies, your squad mates, seeing what they're up to. This is now our chambers. This is our room. We can examine this, get another 17 experience. Look at our bed, it looks pretty comfy. Oh no, it doesn't, it looks, that looks awful. Anyways, uh, why don't we go talk to our squad mates? Caden's right here. Hello, sir. Anything you need, Commander? Yeah, I, uh, tactical What's appraisal. What's your opinion on the last mission? I don't see how we could have done things any better, at least not without getting to Eden Prime sooner. Hmm. We were on the scene faster than any other Alliance ship could have been. That's true. Hey, what about, uh, just, just trying to get a how sense you doing? Of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I've wasted enough of your time for now, Commander. We'll have time for personal debriefings later. Okay, there's we'll no need to be another time, Lieutenant. Yeah, whatever. Right I thought we were friends, but apparently you're just, you just, you just want me for my command leadership. That's fine. Sleeper pod, we go ahead and examine that and get another 17 XP and uh, a codex entry, which again, we want. Although we did get that that nice trophy there, which was archivist, find all primary alien council races, extinct races, and non-council races codex entries. So not a hard one to get, but I'm glad we got it. 
Anyways, we also can replenish our mini jail if we want. It's only one. And we have Dr. Chakwas in here. I don't think there's anybody hanging out back here, but thought I would just point that out. It's not like there's any new codex entries either, which is too bad because I like them. Yes, Commander. Is there something you need? Uh, you know, I think I've, we've I actually talked. Goodbye, Commander. I don't think she has anything new for us, so let's go and see who else we can talk to here. Two random people. Hello, random people. Hello. Anyways, let's head down here. There's more squad mates that we can uh, check in with. Highly recommend doing this between every single mission, uh, big mission assignment, stuff like that. That's definitely something you're going to want to do. We can talk to this guy Looking real quick. For supplies? Who isn't Let's really going to have back. anything new for us, but you'll see that he now has, uh, we can actually buy some of the Spectre stuff from him as well, it would seem, which is pretty nice for us. And we did grab those licenses earlier, so you'll notice that he's actually selling a bunch of stuff, including a Omni tool, which will be useful if you do decide to use Tally or you're an engineer. Hey, Garrus, uh, friendo. Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. I knew working with the Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. You knew? Have you worked with the Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. At CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. Yeah, but like, it's just a suspect, so. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things. There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC's handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. Yeah. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not fast. Got it? I wasn't trying to. I understand, Commander. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I kind of scolded you, Garrus, and I, I didn't mean to do that, you handsome cockroach-looking man. I didn't, I really didn't, I'm sorry. Anyways, let's talk Commander? to Ashley. We talk. Do you have a few minutes to talk? One on one? I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duty squared away. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. Man, I love getting blown off. It's just, it's like, reminds me of real life and it's What's just. What's your opinion of the last <laughs> mission? Kind of wish you'd got there sooner, Commander. Yeah, sorry no about offense. that. No offense. I appreciate the rescue. I just wish. Yeah. You wish we'd been able to save the rest of your unit. Yes, ma'am. If I had been more alert, we wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. I mean, I don't think that's true. The Geth are perfect ambushers. They don't move, they don't make noise, they don't even breathe. They have flashlight heads, ma'am. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. <laughs> that's a good point. They, Next, how did you miss big flashing? Hey, oh, man. Anyways, we could talk to Rex. Look at him. Oh, you look so good in this. Nice ship you got, Shepard. Thank you. What can I do for you? I'd like to know more What's about story, you, Rex. Rex? There's no story. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. Come on, just a, just a short you one. You Krogans live for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? No. An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? No. And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? Yeah, good point, yeah, man. I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. Sorry, Rex. I wasn't trying to get you upset. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. Huh. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Interesting. What can you tell me about the genophage? 
ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. Whoa. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected, every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? Well, I mean, we're just... Ask a Krogan. Weird. Would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. Man, I want a Krogan scientist now. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. You know, it kind of makes every time that you so defeat long, a Krogan in this game. Shepard. Not not great you know you take one down you're like oh man i just i just added to their extinction that's not that's not that doesn't feel good you know so we can talk to engineer adams here see hey, if Commander, he says anything you know that quarry in tally she's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines Is she bothering i'll tell you? her to leave you alone what no she's amazing i wish my guys were half as smart as she is give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than i do she's got a real knack for technology that one I can see why you wanted her to come along. She's useful. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You've got an eye for talent, Commander, but I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. No, I wanted to know about the Normandy. Know what, about tell the me, Normandy. tell me a little bit more that's about the our best ship. ship I've ever served on. Probably the fastest vessel ever designed. She's the only one using the new Tantalus drive core. Tantalus, you say? What's so special about the Tantalus drive core? Proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel. Not only are we faster. We can run at FTL speeds longer before we have to discharge the core. Nice. What about the stealth system? Fill me system? in on the IES stealth system. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up. Unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself. No emissions to give away our location. Eventually the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours silent running and they overheat cook us inside our own hull. Oh, that's gross. There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day. But you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Most vessels rely on scanners. As long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. Why doesn't it work with faster than light travel? Cranking up the FTL, blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Hmm. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight, but for short-range missions, our stealth systems are amazing, and we've got the only one. The old, like across everything? Where else have That's you served, dope. Adams? You name a class of Alliance ship, I probably served on it. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was on the Tokyo, only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. Interesting. Carry on, Adams. It's nice, nice to meet you, man. I, I'm glad. I'm glad you're you're on our. You like. You seem like a nice guy. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive core like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. Tally, you're amazing. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. The Normandy's a prototype, cutting edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. You're into ships. I, I mean, no you kind of have to be, technology but. Technology so interesting. It comes with being a Quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. 
We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. That's 300 years ago. I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work, mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. So that's what she meant by something important, something that can actually benefit the, the entirety of, of her race. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million Quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. Huh. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. I mean, if that our makes population sense. grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. They only have so much space, of they course, have to do that. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. Huh. The Conclave? That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. Interesting. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials? In practice, the conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. Whoa. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. That's actually super cool. So if, if there's a decision that they really don't like, they have to sacrifice their careers, if you will, to veto it. I mean, that's a, that's a big deal. I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins, what they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Tell me. I need to know everything, Tally. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. And you done forked up. The council didn't step in and stop you. This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. So the Geth share brain power? Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in a group, the smarter they are. Like a hive mind. So exactly. there's some sort of group consciousness. No, nothing like that. What? They cannot share sensory data or information. 
Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. Yeah, I don't get that it. That doesn't make any sense. Agreed. I'm probably oversimplifying. The Geth are incredibly advanced and complex creations. All you need to know is that they get smarter when they gather in large numbers. But they don't have a As hive mind. more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. You think? I don't see what's so bad about those questions. The Geth were created to engage in mundane, repetitive, or dangerous manual labor. That's fine for machines, but it won't satisfy a sentient being for long. The Geth were showing signs of rudimentary self-awareness and independent thought. If the Geth were intelligent, then we were essentially using them as slaves. It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. Uh, yeah, why wouldn't they? You can't blame them for fighting for their survival. We had no other choice. The Geth were already on the verge of revolution. By acting quickly, we had a chance to end the war before it began. The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Veil. Now we drift through space, exiled, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. So, so basically the Geth took over the homeworld that they were built on. They're now homeworlds and said, hey, you got to leave. And then they weren't like being malicious or, you know, vindictive, whatever. They weren't like, we're going to crush the Quarians. They just wanted a home. It's hard to feel sorry for you. Your ancestors tried to wipe out another species. That's probably not the nicest thing we to say. We made a mistake when we created the Geth in the first place. But we did not make a mistake when we went to war against them. I disagree. If we had not acted, they would have wiped us out. They're a synthetic life form. They have no use for organics. None. Why do you think they cut themselves off from the rest of the galaxy? Why do you think they've killed every organic being who's ever tried to contact them? Not everyone. They didn't kill Saren. What does that tell you? The Geth are not innocent victims in all this. They're the enemy. They want to destroy us. Not just the Quarians. All organic life. That's why they've joined up with Saren. And that's why we have to stop him. Okay, well, what about your pilgrimage? I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Do they always can accept it? Can captain choose to reject the gift? That doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. You just bring a piece of metal and they're like, yeah, come on board. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. Sounds dangerous. I can't believe they just send you off alone. It's not like they just cast us out. Before we leave, we are given lessons in how to survive outside the flotilla. 
and given gifts to help us on our journey. We also receive implants to fight off sickness and disease. Generations of living in an isolated and highly controlled environment have left our immune systems weaker than most. By the time we leave the fleet, we are well equipped for the pilgrimage. This is a rite of passage for all Quarians. If it were dangerous, our numbers would suffer. Virtually every pilgrimage ends with a triumphant return and the ritual presentation of the gift to one of the fleet's captains. I want to cool. talk about something else. Like what? But they never... I should go. Thank you, Tally, Here. for that excellent conversation for 70 extra XP for having that. That's awesome. Wow, good for us, man. Good for us. Anyways... That is going to wrap it up for this episode of Mass Effect Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty right here on Missile Dine Online. Thank you guys so much for watching. A huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres every single day around 2 p.m. Eastern. Sincerely appreciate you guys. Uh, it's a little bit longer of an episode, but I really wanted to get all of the conversations and stuff that happened. Uh, we started off with a bang, as usual, and then kind of kind of got into those conversations but i love them and i'm so glad that we have almost a full squad now and in the next episode we are going to go and get our final crew member who's going to join us and i i'm so ecstatic for this one uh one of my favorite my favorite character uh in all of mass effect i'm very excited for this so thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you all tomorrow in the premiere and remember never give up never surrender to the to the reapers yep perfect